In another video, we took a look at the product rule for derivatives and how we can change that into a formula for integration. And in that video, it wasn't immediately obvious why that formula was useful. It's this formula right here. Um, and it's called the integration by parts formula. And it looks like this. So when we want to take the integral of something in this form here, and this form is not immediately obvious why it's useful, again, um, but if we want to take the integral of something in this form, we can rewrite it as our function u times v right here minus the integral of v times du. Now, the idea here is we want to take an integral that we cannot integrate and rewrite it as an integral that we can. So let's look at what's going to happen here going from u to du and from v to, or I'm sorry, from dv to v. First of all, since we're going from u to du, that tells me that we're going to differentiate u. And if we want to simplify this integral, we want a u that is going to reduce. So when we're doing integration by parts, we want to choose a u that reduces when we take the derivative. Um, and when I say reduce, we want maybe an exponent that's going to decrease in power, um, or we want to take the derivative of a constant that's going to disappear, but we want this u here to get more simple. Since v here, since we're starting with dv or a differential of v and moving to v, we want to choose a v here that when we take the integral, it's not going to get more complex. Typically, we're going to be looking at a trig function like sine or cosine. We might be looking at an exponential function like e to the x because those functions stay pretty much the same complexity. Complexity. The integral of e to the x is e to the x. The integral of sine is cosine, uh, or at least negative cosine. And so we want to choose a dv that when we integrate, it does not get more complex. Then we can use this formula here where we take the derivative of u and get du. We take the integral of v and get v, and we get an integral here that is more easy, easily solved. So let's look at an example here. We want to take the integral of x times the cosine of x. There's no formula here that, that tells us what the integral of x times the cosine of x is, so we're going to have to simplify this integral by integrating by parts. And I'll keep this formula up here. This is the formula I showed on the last slide. And so we want to choose a u that's going to reduce. Well, I, th I think the obvious choice here, um, our two choices are x or the cosine of x. If we take the derivative of cosine x, it's not going to reduce, so we'll choose x here uh, as our u, and then when we take the derivative of that, we're going to get um, dx, and, and we'll get to that in a second. Since we are going to integrate u with respect to v, uh, the remainder of what we have here is going to have to be our dv, um, and this may be a little bit of a difficult concept at first, but our dv is actually going to be a function of x times dx. So we'll say that dv is the cosine of x dx. Now, once we've decided what u and v are going to be, we're going to have to, I'm sorry, what u and dv are going to be, we also have to know what v is, and we also have to know what du is. So to do that, we're going to differentiate this, and we would get du dx is equal to 1, or that's the same thing as saying du is equal to dx. To figure out what v is going to be, we're going to integrate both sides, and we get v is equal to the integral of cosine of x with respect to x, and that's going to be the sine of x. Now, even though these are indefinite integrals here, for, for now we're going to ignore the constant of integration. Um, it actually turns out that with this process, we're going to take care of that constant at the very end. So, we know what u is, we know what v is, we know what du is. And so we can rewrite this integral here as the integral of u times dv, just like we have in this formula here. And that's going to equal u times v, which is going to be x times the sine of x, minus the integral of v with respect to u. So we're going to replace the v with sine of x, and we're going to replace the du, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to replace the dx with du. Sorry, replace the du with dx. Um, so we get this. Now, this looks a little bit more complex than what we started with. Um, however, you'll notice that our x is gone. 
and we know how to integrate the sine of x. This is an integral that we know. So what we can do here is integrate this. We'll keep this the same. And so this is going to equal x times the sine of x minus the integral of sine of x. And since the integral of sine of x is negative cosine of x, we get plus cosine of x. And then, like I said, we'll take care of this constant of integration at the end here, um, and we get plus c, since we're doing an indefinite integral. Anytime we do an indefinite integral, we end up with a constant of integration. And just to confirm that we did this correctly, we can take the derivative of our answer. If we take the derivative of our integral, we should get back to where we started. Um, using the product rule, we get the sine of x plus x cosine of x minus the sine of x, and that's just x cosine of x, like we started with right here. We can also use integration by parts uh, with different in, with definite integrals. Uh, we would start this process exactly like we did before. We would choose a u that's going to reduce, and we would choose a dv that's not going to get more complex when we integrate. So we'll say u equals x and dv equals sine of x times dx. And then we'll use those to solve for du and v. And then just plugging into the formula here, we're going to get the we're going to get negative x cosine of x plus the integral of cosine of x times dx. And that's just plugging in our u, v, v, and du here. Now, you'll notice that in this integral here, I did not include the, uh, the lower limit and the upper limit of integration. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to evaluate this integral, and then from there we will plug them in. So we're going to evaluate this as an indefinite integral, and then we'll use our limits to evaluate the definite integral. At this point, we'll integrate the cosine of x with respect to x. Um, the integral of cosine of x is going to be um, the sine of x. So we get for our indefinite integral negative x cosine of x plus the sine of x plus c. But since we want to evaluate the definite integral, we'll take off this constant of integration and we'll evaluate um, what's left between 0 and pi over 2. And so just plugging in pi over 2 for x and 0 for x, we get this expression here. Um, notice that the cosine of pi over 2 is 0 and the sine of 0 is 0. Uh, and essentially what we end up with then is the sine of pi over 2 and the sine of pi over 2 is going to have a value of 1. Um, so this definite integral here is going to have a value of 1. To confirm our answer here, we could plug this into our calculator and either use the fn int on our home screen, or we could integrate that function on our graph. OK, let's use our integration by parts formula to solve a differential equation. Um, here we have the derivative with respect to x of y is x squared times e to the x. Um, so we want to integrate this to get, um, to get rid of our differentials here. And so we want to integrate the x squared e to the x. Remember, to use the integration by parts formula, we want to choose a u that's going to reduce when we take the derivative, and we want to choose a dv that's not going to get more complex when we take the integral. Well, the e to the x here, if we were to take the integral of that, we're going to get e to the x. And the x squared here, if we took the derivative of that, we would get 2x rather than x squared, so it's going to reduce. So we're going to choose u equals x squared and dv equals e to the x times dx. And so that means that du is going to be 2x times dx, and v is going to be e to the x. Plugging what we know into the formula, we get x squared times e to the x, that's our u times v, minus the integral of v, which is e to the x, times du, which is 2x dx. Um, we get this. Now, we have a simpler integral here, but we don't have an integral that we know how to evaluate yet. We still have e to the x times some function of x that's 2x here. So what we're going to have to do is we're actually going to have to integrate by parts again. We're going to choose a new u and a new dv so that we can simplify this integral. Um, the dv we'll choose is the same one we chose before, that e to the x times dx, because we know that's not going to get more complicated if we integrate it. And we'll choose this 2x here 
Um, actually, we'll move the 2 out in front of the integral, and then we'll choose x as our u. Um, to, to show that we're using a new u and a new dv, I'm going to use these subscript 1s here. Um, and so we get du1 is equal to dx, and we get v is equal to e to the x again. So rewriting this, we, we have exactly what we had before, but now the integral here is going to be given by this formula our new u times v is going to be x times e to the x and we'll have to distribute this 2 to the other term also so it's going to be plus 2 times the integral of e to the x with respect to x and the integral of e to the x with respect to x is just e to the x so we can rewrite this now as x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x plus 2 e to the x and keeping in mind that we're doing an indefinite integral to start with here, we have our plus c. Now, we can use our initial condition. Uh, we know that when x equals 0, y equals 4. So we can put 0 in for x in this equation here, and 4 in for y to figure out what c is equal. And so we get this equation here, and c is going to equal 2. So the particular solution for this differential equation is going to look like this. So what we've done here is we had to use integration by parts twice. We got a simpler integral a simpler integral after the first use. However, it wasn't simple enough to evaluate, so we had to use it again. Um, there are going to be times where we have to use integration by parts over and over and over again, and we'll look at an example called tabular integration. Um, that's going to allow this process to go a little bit more smoothly if you have to use integration by parts more than twice. Um, just to look at this differential equation here, um, this differential equation is going to give us a slope field that looks like this, and I've graphed our answer to this on the slope field, and we can see that it passes through our initial condition at 0, 4, um, and it follows our slope segments very nicely here. Um, so this is what the solution to our differential equation is going to look like.